Welcome back to another week of overviews for level B. This week we're going over lessons 29 through 32. I'm curious how it went last week. Did you do better at making your right angle with your hands than I did? I really hope so. This week is going to be good. We're going to get into the hundreds. So grab your manual. I'm going to show you what materials we're going to need first, and then we'll just dive into lesson 29. You'll need your abacus, the place value cards, your abacus tiles, the math journal, a draw erase board, your math card game book, along with the basic number deck, the worksheets, and you'll need two crayons, a dark crayon and a lighter color crayon. One other item you're gonna need that I did not have a picture for the PowerPoint is the flat hundred squares. This is appendix four out of your packet, if you got a packet. If you didn't get a packet, you're gonna have to make copies of it from the back of the teacher's manual. There's quite a few copies, you're gonna need all of them. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the lesson. Lesson 29 is numbers 100 to 120. The first activity is adding 100 to 120. This is where you're going to need your abacus tiles and your abacus. So this is going to represent 100. And then they'll enter the numbers 1 to 20 or 210 on the abacus. So as you're saying this, now remember this is 100. I'm going to sit it down just because I can't do both. Hold that and <laughs> use the abacus. So we're going to have like 100. One. Here you have 110. Then when we get to here, think about it for a second. What do you think? You're going to tell you're going to say it? Yeah, 110 one. Here we have 110 five. 110 nine. 100 to 10. The activity using the place value cards. Just, I can't stress enough how important it is to do. So here we have our 100, 100, our one. So they're gonna see this when they're entering the one onto the abacus, they have their place or their abacus tile so they'll see the 101 that way, but then they're gonna build it. 101, we get to 10, it would be 110. And you'll see why it's important to use the math way when you're saying this initially. Let's see, I'm gonna do a three. So we have 100, 10, three. So we build that and we get 110.3. Now the child may know it as 113 and that's fine, but saying it this way, 110.3 really puts emphasis on the place value, 110.3. And you'll see the opportunity in the uh, lesson to build these numbers up to 120. And they're going to also write these in their math journal. And then when you're done and they say it the math way, notice they want you to go back and have your child say it the regular way also. And what I like about the math way is let's just say your child gets confused. You could always refer back to the math way of saying it. I know my son one time when we were I was giving him a problem using the word 23 and he struggled with it at first. I could just hear that look in his eyes. And I said, remember the math way, 2103. And he was like, oh yeah. So it's really nice to have that as backup if for some reason they do get confused. Lesson 30 is more hundreds. So lots more practice working with the hundreds, numbers in the hundreds. And remember, when we're saying the number, we want to overemphasize 200. It won't be forever, just a little bit. It just helps to, to give another reminder of how many places are behind when we hear 
hundred and point to it as you're saying it to reinforce it. The activity on the second page about combining hundreds, tens, and ones is like what I was talking about when I was showing you the place value cards for 110.3 or 113. It's pretty much the same. Just remember this abacus tile is going to be the hundred. And then the abacus is what they're going to use to enter their tens and ones on. So it ends with the game. Can you find game, which is similar to what they've been playing, but we're going to work into the hundreds. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more challenging. You're going to lay out all your place value cards for the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. And then there's specific numbers you're asking them to find. And if they do it correctly, all the cards are going to get used up. Lesson 31 is the first of many enrichment lessons you're going to encounter doing Right Start. An enrichment lesson is a lesson, notice what it says over here in the explanation for the teacher. It's designed to bring the world of math into everyday life. If necessary, because of time restraints, the lesson may be omitted without loss of continuity. I really recommend that even though it says it could be omitted, that you really try not to, or maybe a little compromise. Maybe you skip over it now and you do something like this over the summer, just to reinforce the skills that they've been learning in this level. You can make it fun when you don't have the time constraint of trying to get all the other subjects done. So there's some options. I highly encourage you though to go through and do the enrichment lessons, even if it's not now, I would do them at some point. Now this lesson, I say all that to say that this is one of those lessons that there's a little bit of a love-hate relationship here because it requires 37 of these black squares, at least 37. Now these come already printed out. I mean, you can see there's quite a few different pages here. These are already in your appendix packet. But if you don't have the appendix packet, you will have to make copies. And you really do need to use all those cards or all those copies. And it's, it's fairly self-explanatory on here. But what you're going to do is you're going to give the child their, their a blank hundred square. So each one of these squares, you'll cut them out, is a hundred square. And they're going to fill one in for nine of these. They're going to fill all ten in for nine of these. And then they're going to fill in a hundred square. But 19, you're going to need 19 of the hundred squares. This is where those two crayons come in, a dark crayon and a lighter crayon. Now you could do the blue and yellow because that's what the abacus tiles are. However, you don't have to. Just let your child pick out two colors where you can definitely tell the difference between the two. They will be using these hundred squares to work with building numbers up from one all the way up to 9,999. So they're gonna, it's going to really enrich why it's called an enrichment lesson, their comprehension of these bigger numbers. And one thing you can consider, maybe you want to do this, but you think, wow, that's a lot to do in one day, then split it up over the days. Maybe you continue with your lessons, but each day you give your child some of these to fill in, because I mean, 19 cards that you have to color to look like the hundreds on your abacus, that can be time consuming and tedious, especially if you have a child that's very meticulous. So know that you can do this over a few days. Continue with your lessons and give them a few cards. Say, hey, let's make five more hundreds. And then once it's all finished, then you can go back and actually do the lesson. Last lesson for this week, lesson 32. This is the two five strategy. Now, before we go anywhere, I have to tell you 
when I was teaching this to my children, oh, I'm just gonna be honest. I did the lesson, my kids did just fine, they went off to play, and then I thought to myself, what do we just do here? I didn't really understand it. I had to go back and reread the lesson a couple times before it really started to register, but it didn't register enough that it clicked. And it wasn't until a couple of years later that I was at a conference. I was having to add some numbers and it was like number seven and six. And I remember I'm a finger counter. Okay. So I started, I was tired. So I started on my fingers and I'm like, wait a minute. Six is five and one and seven is five and two. And that's 10 and three. It's 13. I was so excited that it finally clicked for me. That was two years later. So just know that these strategies that we are teaching, that Right Start is teaching, not everybody's going to grasp and love right at first. And if your child struggles with this, it's okay. There are going to be a lot more times for practice. There's games to reinforce. So anyway, let's dig in. The first thing you're going to do is work with your child. So you're going to do something like this so they can get comfortable seeing this on the um, top and this on the bottom and see that this is four. Or to see that this is three. Because then what you're going to go in and do, and this is this only works, this strategy only works for numbers between five and ten. So when we get to doing the two fives, I'm going to use the same example I had. Let's see, six, and I think that's seven. Six plus seven. Do you see the two fives? And I'm going to do this just to make sure you see it. So we see our two fives, that's 10, and then three, so our answer is 13. Let me try it again. Here we have seven plus eight, all right? You see the two fives for 10, the three and the two for five, it's 15. This is all that the five strategy is. It works with numbers between five and nine, helping the child to see the five, the two fives to make 10, and then whatever deeds are left, that would be the answer. And so there's gonna be different activities you're gonna do with this. You're also gonna play a game. You're gonna be playing go to the dump, but you're gonna be using the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, those cards. And the total has to equal 15. So instead of how go to the dump, two cards equal 10, this, go to the dump is two cards equal 15. And so that way they get practice working with seeing the two fives. Don't do what I did. I did not look and read it well enough. So I have my granddaughter playing this game with all the cards. Well, the problem with that is that we haven't learned a lot of different strategies. So she struggled and then I realized, oh yeah, you're only supposed to use the numbers between five and 10 to play this game. And of course, let your children use the abacus as they need it. And then also try to encourage them after they've been doing it for a little while to see if they can maybe try it up in here. Can they see the abacus up in their mind? And it's okay if they can't, but you never know unless you ask. Also make note in the teacher explanation, that the card deck with the numbers five through 10 will be used in the next lesson. So don't just shuffle them back into the stockpile, keep them separate. So that way it'll just be easier to get those supplies out. We did it, we made it through another week. I'm excited for you guys to get going with your children and working into the hundreds and working with the two five strategy. I think the game will be very helpful in helping to, to just cement those facts. So have fun this week. Enjoy playing the game. And again, with the enrichment lesson, that is strictly up to you guys to determine if that's something you want to do now, if you want to do it in the summer, or if you want to take a few days and work on it. Ah, the beauty of homeschooling and choice. So 
Next week, we're going to tackle lessons 33 through 36. Until then.